ignition. Today we're going to be showing you how to recharge a gravity tube. So before we get started, we're going to make sure we got all our components together. First thing we're going to have is a KTI double acting pump. Okay. Of course, a good charged battery. You want to make sure that you have a gravity tilt that is fully intact. You're going to need a crescent wrench or 11 sixteenths wrench. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our pump is hooked up correctly. Okay. So of course, you got your negative and your positive side on your battery, okay? And then on your pump, you have a ground post and a positive post, okay? The positive post is always the opposite one of your red cap on your KTI double acting pump. If your battery's not charged, you will burn up the cylinder. If your connections aren't tightened correctly, it will also burn up your cylinder. You have your positive wire goes here on your pump your negative wire goes on your ground post on your pump okay we keep ours on a constant charge so we always know we have the adequate amount of juice running through our battery to run our pump properly we need to make sure that our gravity pump is fully intact the first step of this process is to remove your caps because if you're having to recharge a gravity jump system, that means there's air somewhere in your system. Okay. So first thing we want to do is take off our caps. Okay, now we have our caps off. We're going to walk down here and turn our ball valve on. Now, I have my hoses marked on your pump. There is an A, an A side, and a B side. Your A side will always be closest to your solenoid. Okay, your A is up, your B is down. Now, on my system, I already know which one my A is, I already know which one my B is, okay? Like I told you before, I already have mine marked. So I'm gonna put my A line, okay, on the A port of the cylinder, which is at the rear. Okay, now we want to make sure that we put all of our fittings and everything on snug. We cannot allow any air into the system whatsoever. Okay, so we want to make sure to snug it, not over snug it. It's got to be just snug. So now we're going to place our, our B hose into our B port of our cylinder. B is always at the front, A is always at the back. 3,200 pounds of pressure, 1,500 pounds of pressure, okay? So now, it is very important that we do not, when we're putting on recharge hoses from our pump, to make sure not to move our fittings. Our fittings have to be tight. There cannot be any air in the system. That's very important. <clears throat> okay, so now, all my fittings are tight. I'm going to move down here. I'm going to make sure these are tight. Very, very important. There's no movement at all in these. At all. My ball valve is on. So my fluid can fluctuate all the way through my system. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and retract. And when you first start moving your system, if there's a whole lot of air in it, it will push the air back into your reservoir. So you're going to hear noise in that reservoir as you're recharging your system. We're going to take both cylinders all the way extracted at least two or three times. And that just makes sure that we have all the air out of our system. Now at the same time doing this, it's always good to have a flashlight so you can be inspecting your cylinders as you're doing this to make sure it's not one of your seals that are leaking. It's easier to find a leak when you have the proper light. You're going to hear it kick on to this. And once that is, there's overrides because of this pumps that cuts off our pressure. Okay, now that we've went in two or three different times and extracted, extracted, retracted. 
several different times to make sure all our air is out of our pump, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna turn our ball valve off. Okay, now we've done, got all the air out of our system. Okay, now we're gonna turn our B cylinder off. Now, when I hit the up button, only the A side of our system is going to move. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and retract it. We're gonna go back out with it. And see now all my pressure is, is loading onto my A cylinder, so I wanna make sure I'm checking this seal here to make sure we have no leaks. And it also gives you a good chance to check your bore, make sure it's not scratched. A good rule of thumb is if you've got a scratch on your bore and you can rub it with your fingernail, if it catches, that's too deep. Your cylinder needs to be further looked at. We want to make sure that these are in the same spot for whoever's building the trailer. Okay, now, as I get it fully out, you see that my B side over here starts to move, okay? Because it's at the max pressure we can have. Now, I'm gonna ease off on some of that pressure, okay? That makes it safer for me when I take my hoses off of my ports. Now I'm gonna take my wrench. I'm gonna find a towel. It's always safer when you have a towel. Okay, now, before I take off anything, I wanna make sure that I cover it up fully. So, now, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my wrench to my fitting, okay? And I'm gonna hold my fittings to make sure they don't move when I take this off, okay? Now, also, you wanna make sure that that fitting is covered up because it has got pressure on it. It's very important. It has pressure in this line, and quite a bit of it. So you wanna make sure you got <clears throat> this fitting covered or it's gonna be a mess. I'm gonna crack it a little bit Okay. Then I'm gonna move it a little bit with my fingers, right? And then I can move this hose back and forth and it allows the pressure to come off of it. Now, I've done release my pressure off of it so it's safe for me to remove my hose. Now, it's very important, once I take this hose off, I immediately put on the cap. We do not want any air in this system. It's very important not to let any air get into your system. Now, to make sure I had no air in my system, or that I didn't lose any more fluid than I had to, I went ahead and put my finger over. Okay, now when I move my finger, I put my cap straight on. Now, I want to make sure that I snug this fig. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use my crescent to make sure that I hold my finger to where it cannot move. Now I can grab my cap and put it on without moving. Now, my fitting never moved, my cap is on tight. I lost no pressure. It's also very important to make sure that when you get done working on an area that you clean all the fluid off. That way, if you do spring a leak, you know where it's at. Now it's time to do our A side. We got our B side done. Now we're gonna do our A side. I'm holding my fitting. I'm gonna loosen this just a little bit. I'm gonna grab my towel, okay? Because if you are bypassing somewhere, this will have fluid too, pressure. Now, once again, I'm gonna apply my finger over the hole while I grab my other cap. And I'll apply my cap to where we don't lose no fluid and suck no air. Now, before I tighten it up, I'm gonna apply my crescent wrench to make sure my fitting does not move. It is very important. You'll notice the lock is still closed. At no point until you put this on the trailer do you want to open this lock. We hope that you benefit from this video. If you have any problems or concerns, you can call us at Premium Supply, 903-455-7777.